Hey y'all, today I wanna to talk about this study that came out last year and it didn't come across my radar until just this week, but it's really interesting. It's from the National Institutes of Health, the NIH. Uh, it was a small study, but it was equally divided between men and women, uh, which is good because a lot of times it's, you don't get like that equal division, um, but it's about eating ultra processed food and how it absolutely, definitely contributes to weight gain. So they, it's the first, it's small scale, but it's the first randomized control research of its kind. And they divided up 10 men and 10 women and they put them, one of them, the, for the first two weeks they had them on an ultra processed food diet. Um, and they could eat as much as they wanted of certain things. And then the second week they put them on a minimally processed food diet at same, they could eat whatever they wanted with, with similar macros. So they had the same amount of fat in each meal, they had the same amount of carbs, the same amount of protein, um, and like that. So an example they gave of a very, very processed breakfast, actually I could come up with some that are way more processed than this, but an ultra processed breakfast consisted of a bagel with cream cheese and turkey bacon. So if you think about those things, there's a lot of processing that goes into a bagel like especially just a regular in the grocery store bagel and certainly turkey bacon, all kinds of mystery ingredients in most turkey bacon. While the unprocessed breakfast was oatmeal with bananas, walnuts, and skim milk. So if you think about that, oatmeal, aside from just milling it, nothing. Banana is a banana, walnut is a walnut, and skim milk is, it's minimally processed. So those are the kind of foods they were thinking of. I think it would have been more interesting if they had done things like like Cheetos, Snickers, and Dr. Pepper for breakfast. Because the stuff they were giving them was still, it was highly processed, but it wasn't as extreme as a lot of things that we have available to us is like in snack food. So anyway, the people who were on, when they were on the ultra processed diet, they tended to eat about 500 calories more per day than they did on the unprocessed diet. That can lead to a lot of weight gain. If you think about that 500 calories a day um, they in on average they gain two pounds in two weeks on the ultra processed diet and they lost two pounds on the unprocessed diet so that is so interesting to think about so what can you do to take things out of your diet that are considered ultra processed well the first thing you can do is always look at the label so I did that I was today I'm in um, I'm in the apartment in New York City. Second night in four months I've spent the night at the apartment because we've just been in Connecticut this whole crazy time. Anyway, so I was happily, I didn't have a whole lot left in my freezer or fridge uh, or pantry that was processed. I don't, I tend not to eat a lot of processed food anyway. One thing I did find, which was very interesting, and that's why eating gluten-free can be somewhat hazardous because to make gluten-free products really tasty, you have to put a lot of stuff in there. So the uh, La Tortilla factory, the gluten-free tortillas, I've talked about these before. I've used, I've, I've eaten them forever. I just, until I've gone, what I do, do now is I've gone to the Trader Joe's brown rice tortillas. They have very few ingredients. This has a lot and it's not, there, it's not mystery ingredients, but see the, the ingredient list is pretty long. So there's a lot of stuff going on in there. And anytime you see things like natural flavors, those are, those are, that's a mystery item. You don't know what's in there. There's like gum, xanthan gum and guar gum and, you know, baking powder and, which is fine, but maybe, I mean, it's not terrible, but this is the most processed thing I could find. An example of what would be a little bit better would be to get my carbs with something like this. Organic black beans uh, spaghetti. The ingredients, organic black beans. That's it. So that's probably a better, it's still, is it processed? Yes, they have to smush up the black beans and extrude them somehow and do something, but it doesn't have, it's minimally processed and it has very few ingredients. Um, in this case, one ingredient. The other one that I found that I really like uh, for gluten-free, again, um, hard to do gluten-free without adding some extra ingredients to it. So the little Crunch Master, these have been around for a long time. These have quite a lot of ingredients, but they're, they're all, it's all stuff that you're gonna recognize, you know? So it's brown rice flour, whole grain, yellow corn, potato starch, safflower oil, oat fiber, cane sugar, sesame seeds, flax seeds, millet, sea salt, and quinoa seeds. So taken in, in the aggregate, 
it's a lot of stuff, but individually, those are not terrible ingredients. So I don't feel bad eating these. I eat very few things out of a package. I was just looking in the freezer now. I've got, you know, frozen fresh organic corn, frozen fresh organic spinach, frozen fresh organic kale. And that's kind of what I have in there. And then I have 10 tuna, cans of beans. I mean, that's all that's left over from, because I've kind of cleaned it all out when we knew we weren't going to be coming back into the city that much during these last four months. Uh, so I don't have a lot left in there. But even if I were to take you through my kitchen in Connecticut, maybe we'll do that when I get back. Um, you would find very few things that are highly processed. And I think that's what helps me maintain my weight because I don't eat a lot of processed food. So anyway, think about that. This study is really interesting. It's on the NIH website and I will put a link to it in the description box, uh, but really interesting, especially if you like to geek out on um, diet science like I do, it's just so interesting. So Thursday, May 16th, 2019 NIH study finds heavily processed foods cause overeating and weight gain. It's small scale, but hopefully there will be bigger studies to come. It also just stands to reason, doesn't it? Like just eat closer to the source of your food. Don't put a lot of junk in it. Um, the other thing I was listening to a podcast, if you guys ever listen to The Sportful, Dan Pashman, there's a recent podcast out and he talks to a flavor scientist about how they, when they say natural flavors, there's no real rhyme or reason to what a natural flavor is. And some of the natural flavors can be very unnatural to your taste buds and it makes you crave things. It makes you want more of it. So if you eat like a barbecued potato chip, there's some magic powder that they put in there under the guise of natural flavors that makes you just go nom, 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 give me more. Whereas if you have a simple kettle chip, just, and I, I have these, that's the ones, it's just simple potatoes, salt, I think it's just potatoes, salt, and oil, right? That's all that's in it. No natural flavors, no nothing else. It's just potatoey goodness. You don't, you don't crave it as much. I mean, you have a few and then you're like, okay, I've had my potato chips, that's fine. But there's something about like, whether it's sea salt and vinegar, uh, blue cheese, uh, like a ranch, you know, I start eating those and I just go, oh my gosh, there's something really jam packed with flavor in this and it's unnatural your taste buds are overwhelmed and it gives you that kind of craving. That's why I just, I will not have that stuff in the house. I just will not have it in the house. I will have plain organic potato chips sometimes, the big thick ones, real crunchy, because I think they look very chic when you're doing a little cocktail nibbles with like a thing of nuts, olives, those just very simple potato chips, really nice ones, good, good quality organic with your little cocktail spread. I think it's just like a, it's a lovely little finger food. I've always thought that that's that's kind of a cool thing to add on a cocktail tray, but I will not have that other stuff in the house. And don't even get me started on Cheetos. Oh, my childhood favorite, Cheetos and Dr. Pepper. Honestly, oh, that was it, it was amazing. But even back then, they weren't as highly processed. Today, there's all kinds of, the science of, of flavor and flavoring is just beyond where it's ever been. So some of the stuff that's highly processed is beyond what your taste buds are even supposed to be, it's overstimulating it, it's turning it up to 11. And your taste buds aren't supposed to handle that. And it also desensitizes you to natural flavors. So a simple baked potato with a little butter and salt on it isn't gonna then be as satisfying if you've been eating these flavor bombs in potato chips that have all these incredibly unnatural flavors. So keep it really simple and, and minimally processed in terms of your food. It's something I've been saying for ages. So glad that this study came out. I hope they do many, many more of them. And if you wanna see what I'm cooking up these days, you can follow along on Instagram at the care and feeding of divas. I'm putting up my, I'm cooking not every single night, but most nights we're still cooking. We're still not going out a lot, even though we can sit outside at restaurants. Um, it's just not the same. And I'm just cooking a lot at home still. So I'm putting those up on my stories if you want to follow along there, the Care and Feeding of Divas. And I'm going to keep listening to your comments and questions. Please feel free to chime in. Let me know where you are watching from. We've got divas from all over the world. I mean, every corner of the globe. You guys are amazing and you're all interested in being as fit and fabulous as you can possibly stand to be. Glamour has no boundaries. I tell you what, it is so fun to listen to you guys. And some of you have uh, DM'd me on Instagram with some funny, funny questions and comments. And I've gotten to be friends with you guys. 
and it's it's really cool. Like I've never met you. You live on the other side of the planet, but you're adorable. Tante Lucia, I'm looking at you. All right, you guys stay as glamorous as you can stand to be.